Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring data center eVPN VXLAN learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. We have a few different devices, uh, five to be exact, or five devices we will be configuring. And then there's two hosts, host one and host two. Uh, the five switches are spine one, spine two, leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. And uh, we do have some parameters here on the left you can see. You can see the loopback addresses for each switch. Spine one is 192.168.100.1. Spine 2 is dot 2, leaf 1 is dot 11, leaf 2 is dot 12, and leaf 3 is dot 13. And then with the hosts, the hosts are going to be in VNI 5099, both hosts, and they're both going to be in the same VLAN, and they're both going to be in the same broadcast domain, the same subnet. And you can see here, host 1 has 10.1.1.1 slash 24, and host 2 has 10.1.1.2 slash 24. And what we're doing here, or what we want to do, is we want to enable communication between host 1 and host 2 by configuring eVPN VXLAN. And something else to point out here is that this is the overlay network. I wanted to show this first, and that there's IBGP in the fabric that is passing eVPN routes around. So just keep that in mind. And so the overlay network is currently working and functioning and well, technically it's not passing the routes around yet because we haven't set up eVPN VXLAN, but it's set up to do so. The IBGP sessions have family eVPN signaling configured for them. And then in the next slide, this slide shows how the VXLAN tunnels will be forming. And you can see here that LEAF 1 and LEAF 3, since they have the directly connected host devices, they will be forming VXLAN tunnels to every other device. And as you can see here, Leaf 1 will be forming a VXLAN tunnel with Spine 1, and then Spine 2, and Leaf 2, and also Leaf 3. And then you can see Leaf 3 is doing the same thing. It's forming a tunnel with Leaf 2, Leaf 1, Spine 1, and Spine 2. All right, so here is the CLI for Spine 1. And the first place we need to go is the switch options. And here we need to configure the VTEP source interface. And it's going to be the loopback interface. And this works well because what happens here is the VXLAN tunnels will be sourced from the loopback. And those loopback interfaces or the routes associated with the loopback interfaces are being passed around in the underlay network. And so we'll, we will have reachability to those routes because of that. And so next we need to configure the route distinguisher. And that's going to be 64. 665 colon 1 and the autonomous system that we're using here is 64665 uh, that was shown in the topology but I did forget to point that out and so what we can do here is we can do the same route distinguisher colon something else on each of the devices and so spine 2 is going to be 64665 colon 2 and leaf 3 is going to be 64665 colon 3 and so forth and then we need to set the VRF target. And that's going to be target colon. It's going to be based off of the autonomous system number again. And we're going to say 101. And that just needs to match on all the switch devices here. And then we need to complete that configuration on the other devices as well. And so the only thing that's going to really change here is the route distinguisher. So what will be nice to do is I will copy these commands out and then just paste them in and make a quick change where necessary. Okay, so let's go to spine two and let's paste that in. And so we'll change the route distinguisher to colon two and then let's go to leaf one and same deal. And we'll change the route distinguisher again to be something unique. And then let's go to leaf two and do the same thing here. And change that route distinguisher to something unique. And then let's go to leaf three and do the same thing. And again, change that to a unique value for the route distinguisher. Okay, so let's jump back to spine one. And then next we need to configure the eVPN protocol parameters. And then within here, we need to set the encapsulation to VXLAN since we will be using VXLAN tunnels. And then we can set the extended VNI list and you can specify the specific VNIs we're using. And we are using 5099 
for the VNI, or you could use this shortcut of all if there's more than just one or a whole bunch or whatever, save you some time. So we're just gonna say all, granted we only have one, so it's not really saving us much time, but I did wanna point that out. And then let's do the display set again, and we'll copy this to the other devices in the data center. And it's no changes, so this will be quick and easy. And then there's leaf three. All right, so let's go back to spine one. And then we need to configure the VLAN. And we set, we'll call this V10 because it's gonna be VLAN. Use the VLAN ID of 10. And then we need to set the VXLAN VNI that this VLAN will be using to 5099. And we'll again, copy this information out and copy it to the other devices. And there's no changes there, so we can simply just copy it in. That's leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. And then on spine one, let's go ahead and commit the configuration. There's nothing else we need to do there. Spine two, same thing. And leaf one, we'll need to make a change. Leaf two, we don't, so let's go ahead and commit the configuration and then jump back to leaf one. Now, recall that leaf one is directly connected to host one on its XE. 004 interface. You can see here it's configured, but it's not configured as a member of that VLAN we just created, V10. So we need to set that as a member of that VLAN. And we'll set V10. Then we can commit the configuration there and we'll jump to Leaf 3 and do the same thing. You can see here it is configured, but not all the way. And then let's go ahead and commit the configuration. And then let's jump back to leaf one and have a look at some things, see what we can see here. See if there's any VXLAN tunnels up. Looking for remote endpoints, anything coming in, and we do. What do we have here? We have something coming in from leaf three. Recall that the loopback address of leaf three is 192.168.100.13. And that's exactly what we want to see. And we can see it's coming in from that address. And we can see the VNI ID as well. And we can see the VTEP interface that is being used. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And you can see the loopback information there. So for the source VTEP IP. And so that looks good. That's exactly what we want to see. Now we can change this command to source and have some information as well. We can see the VLANs that are, are present. You couldn't see that in the previous output. So you can see the VLAN name is V10 and then the VLAN ID is 10. That looks good. And so yeah, everything looks good here. That's how we should see it. And so with that, let's run those commands or at least one of them on the other devices to show you what we have here. And you can see here, the output's a little different. And recall, remember I said that the Leaf 1 and Leaf 3 devices would be forming VXLAN tunnels with every device in the switch fabric. And you can see that here. Now, if we jump back to Leaf 1, we only saw one tunnel. Well, why is that? Well, that's because no other devices besides Leaf 3 is forming tunnels. So we only have one from Leaf 3. But on spine 1 that we see here, we see the two tunnels. We see it from Leaf 1 and from Leaf 3. And that's exactly what we should be seeing. Now, one other thing I do want to point out here, and I did mention it briefly just a few minutes ago, is the VTEP interfaces. These are the VTEP interfaces that are being used. And the nice thing about this is you can look at the VTEP interfaces to get more information. And let's do that now. Let's do show interface VTEP to 32769. And you can see here, VXLAN tunnel endpoint type remote, that's good where it's coming from. And another thing that I do like to point out is the input and output packets. Once you start sending traffic, you should see this incrementing. If it's not incrementing or only the input or only the output is incrementing, then you definitely have some problems. So keep that in mind. So you wanna look for that. And we can jump to spine two. And you will see the similar information. And even on leaf two, we'll see the similar information. 
And so with that, let's uh, what else should we look at? Let's look at let's go back to leaf one. Or I do want to show it on leaf three real quick, that same command. And you can see here, it's basically the reverse. It's coming from leaf one. The source is leaf three. So things look good there. It's using that VTEP interface. And so uh, with this, let's do the run show BGP summary command. So you can see here in this output that we are receiving a single BGP EVPN route, or rather in the BGP EVPN.0 table, and also in the default dash switch dot EVPN.0 table as well. Now that might seem a little odd because we have at least two hosts, and so there should be at least two routes, right? Well, how it works is there is going to be some sort of routing shared, and that has nothing to do with the hosts. And that's that single route you're seeing. And it isn't until we start sending traffic between the hosts that more routes will be passed. And that's because EVPN, how it works is it's not going to pass the routes until they're needed. So keep that in mind. And also, I do want to point out that 192.168.100.1, that's spine one. And the 192.168.100.2, that is spine two. They are route reflectors. And so that's why we're only seeing those two in the overlay network. And let's ping host two. You can see host two is able to talk to host one and let's do the reverse on host two as well. And so we have traffic flowing. So let's go back to leaf three and let's run that same command. And you can see here that we do have, we see in the default switch, you know, we see this change here because this is what's coming from dot one, which is leaf one. And so if we scroll back up, you can see here that we do have just one route, but now we have three routes going back. You know, so some routes are being passed and we can look at leaf one we do the same thing. And you can see that I misspoke when I was looking at leaf one. I said dot one here is uh, is leaf one. That's not. That's spine one because we have route reflectors. Sorry, I got a little confused there. So this is spine one. Spine one is reflecting the routes. Spine two is also reflecting the routes, but it's being hidden. That's why you have that. And so that's what you see here now. More routes are being reflected. And you can see from spine one that we are getting three routes instead of one route. And you can see on spine two the spine two session that those routes are being hidden because we're already getting them from spine one. And so we jump to leaf one and we'll see the same thing here. We'll see that we're getting routes from spine one and we're getting three of those routes, uh, EVPN routes. And so let's actually look at those routes. Let's do bgp.evpn.0. And you can see the routes that we're getting here. And you see that they are type two and type three routes. And if I scroll up here, I believe this is the route that is coming from host two. Let's jump to host two real quick because I think that's its MAC address right there if I remember right. So let's look at host two, kill this ping. And uh, let's look at the MAC address here. And so, okay, this is the MAC address that we're using on this interface. It's 4A0, so let's jump back to leaf one, and I think that's what we see there, yep, 4A0. So that's exactly what we have. So that is that route. And then we can look at the, look at the, what table is it? The default switch EVPN zero. And you can see the MAC and IP routes, the, the two and threes, kind of similar information what you saw before. And so that's that route for host two, and that's from leaf one. And then I want to show, let's look at the EVPN database. And here in the EVPN database, you see that we have, this is leaf threes, and that is host two's MAC address. And you can see the IP address. We know that's host two's IP address. And the active source is leaf three. And so that's exactly what we want to see. Then here you'll see active source for this route or this database entry is pointing out XE004, and that's the local interface on the leaf. So that means that this is host one's MAC address, and you can see host one's IP address as well. And I want to jump back to host two and get that ping going again, because I do want to show one other quick thing. So recall I said something about that VTEP interface. So I do want to show the Ethernet switching VXLAN remote command again, and then we're going to look at that interface. And you can see here, we can see the packets. There's packets going in and out of that interface. 
If we look at that again, you can see it's incrementing and that's great. That means that that traffic is going in and out of that VXLAN tunnel or the VXLAN tunnels. And so everything definitely looks good and is functioning well with EVP and VXLAN and host one and host two can communicate without any problems. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrate how to configure and verify EVPN VXLAN in the data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.